Hello. Ya, selamat datang. Welcome. So we're gonna start in about three minutes. Come and say hi if you can hear me okay and see the screen okay. Thanks, Cindy. Hi, Pak Made. Long time no see. I I cannot really see uh, who's joining, uh, who's on the call. So please do say hi. Hello. Uh, let's give it uh, one more minute. <laughs> Thanks. Waalaikumsalam, Mas Harim. So today I'm actually in Solus office in Telo Air in Singapore. It's just me alone, myself, because we're still kind of in a lockdown situation. Just to give you a little bit of uh, the picture. Yeah. <laughs> While we're waiting to start. Okay. I think we can start. It's one uh, twenty Jakarta time. So welcome again to this session. Uh, I'm actually alone, unlike the other session. There's uh, no moderator, so just me introducing myself and <laughs> presenting the uh, materials. So I'm going to talk about open API, which everybody should be very familiar with yeah. as we are in the API day situation, API days conference. But I'm going to also talk about this one, async API. So it's it's like the, the brothers of uh, open API, a little bit different. OK, so Hyronisa uh, say, I already filled out the link for even portal still in consoles. Okay, yeah, I will take care of that. So I'm going to do a, a little bit of demo as well on this session, uh, a little bit at the end. So it should give you a little bit of a preview what the event portal looks like. So a little bit about myself, uh, that's my Twitter and LinkedIn handle. <clears throat> I came from uh, Sumatra, from Indonesia, from Binjai, a small town near Medan, then to Jakarta for many, many years before I moved to Singapore. 
and I have three kids now, and there's uh, okay one of my uh, university buddies just joined. Hi, Rahmat. Yes. Yeah, so uh, another thing about myself, I used to play uh, electric guitar, but then I sold it when I got married because of financial situation. <laughs> But now I start playing a piano a little bit, so wish me luck on that one. I I work with Sun Microsystem long time back until it got shut down. I think I've I've seen some uh, ex colleague from Sun, like Hi Paul, <laughs> and Tipco for also many years, and then Red Hat, and now Solis. I don't have my Solis shirt now. I'm I'm doing my Async API shirt today but that's the picture right so a little bit about solace so this is our uh, headquarter office in canada so small town in canada but it's a kind of high tech valley the the company actually focusing only on event driven architecture so around that that's also even a broker our message broker I think the technology goes by that name uh, since 10 plus years ago. And the there's a few uh, names I put there, uh, customers that's been using Solace for different kinds of scenarios. So you see some telco companies there, some uh, government, IoT project, uh, smart factory project, uh, airport, uh, smart airport, smart uh, port, in Singapore, so in Singapore itself, we are actually uh, used by the next generation ERP, so ERP2, the new TUAS mega port, the, the bus tracking, so a lot of IoT projects in Singapore. So I hope that gives a bit of idea who Solis is for, for people who never heard of Solis before. But what we will cover today is uh, basically three items. The first is basically a, a sneak peek or quick introduction about Async API. But I'm not going to do uh, a lot of uh, deep dive in this. Basically, just to give a bit of comparison, uh, comparing Open API with Async API. So I hope this will help people coming from Open API or from Swagger to see what Async API is. And then I'm going to touch a little bit about uh, what is Event Broker and how this technology now moved to something called Event Mesh and also Event Portal. And then the last but the most important part is the, the demo time. Right? So I'm going to show you how to use uh, Async API and, and Event Portal from Solis. And what I'm going to do later is basically use a very simple or very simplified uh, service with REST APIs and then compare why would I use Async API to add some capability to that services. So that's basically talks about, uh, I think in the description I talk about uh, north-south traffic and east-west traffic. So I think we'll see how traffic coming from outside into the uh, systems and traffic that goes around between this, the other applications or other services within your enterprise and how we're going to work uh, with Async API to do that. Okay, just quickly check on the chat if there's any question. Yep, no, so I can continue. Uh, at any time there's any questions, just uh, type in the comment or question in the chat. I'll be sure to pause and, and take a look every now and then. So yeah, Async API again is uh, very similar with Swagger of Open API or Open API, but to put it simply, it's like it's like Swagger for event brokers, Swagger for messaging. So instead of seeing uh, HTTP and HTTPS as a schema, you see something like MQTT, MQP, uh, Solace or Kafka. And then you see uh, instead of get, post, put, patch, delete, and whatnot, you'll see publish, subscribe, basically. Right? So 
if you're familiar with event broker, you would be familiar with the terms of publish and subscribe. So that's what we're going to use in Async API. Just to put it side by side. So I, I took this from AsyncAPI.io website. So feel free to uh, hit the website to see more details because I'm not going to cover a lot of this in here. But as you see, uh, it is quite similar. I think some differences like paths in async API is called channel, but it's kind of be it's kind of a analogous between the, the two. Yep. And a little bit more about the components itself. There are some things that's not there in async API, but it is there in open API and, and vice versa. This is a, again a sample that I just took a screenshot from the website. Again, uh, this is just a simple YAML file. Should be very similar with how we work with open API specifications. And of course you can also do JSON if you want, uh, that's not a problem. The spec is now at version two. So it's been around for quite a while, I think around two years now. And Solis is one of the, the backers of this, this uh, specification so it's, it's basically open source specifications and i think the question is why do we need uh, async api yeah so this is what we have with open api so it's basically solve a problem of answering who what when where and why for restful apis so I believe everybody is going to be very familiar with this. And this is what we're going to try to achieve with Async API as well. And the reason for that is because uh, we realize that REST is not the only answer. Right? It's not a silver bullet. Uh, it is great for synchronous interactions. Uh, you do a GET request, you wait, you get a response, and or you do a POST or PUT you get a response, it's blocking, but it's good enough. And for externally facing APIs, this is very much uh, useful because with the uh, API gateways technology, you kind of have uh, all the all the toolings, all the features that you need to be able to expose your APIs to your partners, your customers, basically to outside world. And then you can do uh, monetization, you can do analytics on that, you can do metering, you can do throttling and all this stuff. But uh, it is point to point, it is uh, tight surface coupling. So I, I've seen some people say that uh, we use REST API so we can decouple, but I think what they mean uh, is that you build the specification as a contract. That means you don't need to build both sides, the client and the surface at the same time, you can build the surface first. Then with the spec, you share it with either your developers or your partners or your client, and then they can build the client uh, at that time. But they are basically tightly coupled in terms of the contract. And also in the runtime, when the client actually do a call to your service, that is where we see this point to point. It's just one client calling one uh, endpoint, and that's it. So it is not natively even driven, and it's also not uh, not really resource efficient. Of course, we have uh, stuff like persistent uh, connections to help, but basically, whenever you do a REST call, you open a connection, you do a call, and then you close the connection. That's the the very basic one, right? So if we think about how we do uh, GUI programming or game programming, uh, when you put a button or any widget or any components in the UI, and you want to know if that that button has been clicked, for example, or the pane has been scrolled, what we do is basically uh, patterns like observer or callbacks. Basically, you say that uh, I'm registering to know about whatever changes happens to this particular component. So I think callbacks is also something that we are very familiar with REST API, but 
that term is also being used uh, since a long time ago in terms of uh, this GUI programming. So the button does not actually, I mean, the code does not actually keep on checking whether the button is clicked or not, like repeatedly doing a polling. Am I being clicked? Am I being clicked? It's basically just a sit idle and wait for the uh, notification that the there's an event that the button has been clicked. Right? Game engine is the same. So that also happens with enterprise. If you think about it, somebody swipe their credit card, that's basically an, an event. Right? We don't need to be polling to find out whether a credit card has been swiped or not. A uh, ticket has been purchased, a sensor update, a stock market tick, alert has been raised or a race has been started. That's all an event. So when we do this, uh, we do enterprise systems without or before we do even driven architecture, we usually think, think in terms of uh, methods, right? We call an object, do something with that particular object or instance or class, and basically ask, uh, ask the, the, the class or the object to do something. So we need to find the object and then we execute something on that. But the the mindset, the paradigm of doing uh, even driven architecture is a bit reversed. So what happened is that when we design the component, we don't think about uh, what method do we execute. It's more of a, when we have something happen, we emit an event. For example, I'm a, a payment engine. When I receive an event of payment being initiated or payment has, uh, payment has been requested, I do some stuff. And then when I'm done, I'm emitting another event saying a payment has been uh, completed or a uh, payment is successful. Right. So that's that's an event. I don't really need to know who's going to uh, respond or react to that event because the fact is that there's going to be uh, zero or many system that will react to that event. Right? So maybe at the very uh, basic, there's just one component that's going to listen, which is uh, maybe the notifier right? so to notify the client that the payment has been completed successfully. But then uh, we also have another component that needs to know maybe your audits or your reporting or something like that. So it can be one, it can be two, it can be many. It can be one now, but tomorrow there are three. That's not a problem. Right? So the, the mindset is instead of uh, doing, instead of thinking in terms of uh, execute something, you think about what events do I need to listen to? What events do I need to react to? What events do I publish uh, afterwards? Right? So for example, if again, the, the payments uh, component sample, if I'm a validator, validator engine, I will need to listen to a payment request initiation event. But if I'm the settlement component, I only need to listen to payment uh, validated event, not the payment initiated event. So I'm basically uh, next in line. Uh, I'm not going to do anything when the payment request comes in. Somebody else is going to do some validation verification first before I can do my settlement uh, work to that particular payment, right? So that's the idea. And um, I think before I go that again, checking if there's any question. Nope. Okay, let's continue. So this is a, uh, a screenshot of a talk by uh, Lightband CTO, Jonas. So I like this uh, idea a lot. Uh, the idea is that when you try to move from monoliths to microservices, which is kind of the, the trend now, uh, make sure you don't end up with something like this. Of course, you can go ahead to uh, this talk is on YouTube to see what exactly Jonas is talking about. But, but his idea is that it's not just about breaking down your monoliths into smaller monoliths 
but then still do this uh, call stack uh, or call chain, which every single one of them is actually a blocking call. Right, so he's, he's suggesting something like this. It's basically a combination of both synchronous and asynchronous uh, events. The first one entering the system might still be synchronous. Maybe a mobile apps doing a REST call. Maybe you click a button in your in the web uh, web website. But once it entered your ecosystem, so this is where the uh, east west uh, situation come into picture, right? So when when the traffic comes from outside, from the mobile apps into your gateway into your your uh, front uh, channel handler, for example, that is uh, still likely to be done in REST API, synchronous. But then we've seen a lot of situations where your request come in, the first component take that request, and instead of uh, blocking there until the whole, uh, the whole process is done, the whole call is done, it basically respond to you immediately saying something like, thanks, your request has been recorded. Uh, please wait and we will notify you uh, a bit later. So I think we, we do this with like maybe uh, buying a data data package. Like in Indonesia, we are, we are a lot of prepaid customers there. So when we buy something, you get this uh, acknowledgement it's not the end result, it's actually acknowledgement that your order or your request has been recorded. Just uh, sit back and relax, we'll let you know when that is done. And then when when the, the that particular request come into the, the your internal system, your enterprise systems, that's gonna be multiple microservices maybe, or multiple services that needs to work together to achieve this. Can it be done with uh, full rest, full synchronous, totally? Uh, and we've been doing that a lot with SOA as well, right? We have this one uh, brain surface that basically have this flow one, two, three, four, five, do uh, step number one, see if that's successful, go to number two. If that's successful, go to number three, and so on and so forth. Then you do all kinds of exception handling and whatnot in that that's called orchestration but what we're doing with events it's more of a choreography right in instead of a single component uh hold the control and do the step one by one what we're doing is basically uh everyone is listening to the events at the same time just like a, a group of teenagers listening to a music and do a dance together, right? So no one actually controls everybody else. Everybody just wait for, this is the tune that I supposed to do something, right? So that's, that's the idea. So with that, this is where async API come into picture. I think there's a history part on the website where you can take a look uh, on the story why Franz and the other guys actually started doing the async API spec more than two years ago but we want to do the same thing for events for asynchronous inter interactions just like what we have with rest right? so rest enjoys a uh, very good tooling support uh, that's one of the reasons why it's become very very popular but people also realize the the benefits the advantage of doing event driven architecture but it's just too hard or it's just not enough tooling support. Um, so we end up just doing everything in REST or now maybe a little bit of the gRPC or something like that. So, right. So this is where I think API come into picture, right? So that's, that's one side of that is the specification. The other side is also code generation. Again, pretty much the same like Swagger. So if we put it side by side, it's it's gonna look something like this. Right? So we can also generate code with the async APS pack, either the YAML or JSON file, whichever you prefer. And then you end up with a uh, code, uh, maybe a little bit uh, adding your own business logic to the, the code that's generated. And then you can have the runtime, right? 
once we have that and we can see that uh, this asynchronous interaction is basically supported by this thing called event broker. And there's many kinds of it. And one of them is Solus. Here is where we do uh, maybe shock absorber. So like the persistence. So the idea of that whenever the traffic spike and become very, very high, you need to see, you need to be able to make sure that none of them are lost. And you can also do uh, protocol translation. So maybe it's coming in rest, but your backend maybe is doing something like uh, JMS or Kafka or uh, Apache Beam and something like that. So the event broker can also do something like that. And then you can also do pub sub. So one event comes in, not just one other system needs to react, maybe two or three needs to react. So that's the publish subscribe one to many distribution. Right, so just checking again if there's any questions so far. Okay. So I'm gonna talk about just quickly about the event broker just to be sure that we are on the same page. So event broker is basically a middleware component that does these things like point to point, queuing, request reply, and also replay. So I think Solis uh, does replay, Kafka also does replay, publish subscribe. Some others are only doing publish subscribe and request reply and queuing. So not everyone does everything, but PubSub Plus, the plus there basically says uh, we are doing uh, almost all of this. So there's a question from Harin. Yeah, so when we do SOA plus messaging, so I, I hope everybody is this, uh, reading the question from the chat box. So is this very much different with SOA? So when we do SOA or ESB or, or something like that plus messaging, what we end up doing usually is something like this big orchestration engine, but relying on the message broker or JMS broker or event broker to help you with queuing and persistent. And that's pretty much it. Right? And then you have this uh, centralized, uh, a big component that does everything. But with event different architecture, it's, it's basically more distributed. So you can have one broker in the middle, you can have many brokers, you can have one broker on your cloud environment, one in your on-prem, and everybody just talk to each other just like a network. And you can still have your ESB or your SOA in on the edges, maybe doing your protocol, your uh, payload transformation, maybe you need to read some EDI message, maybe you need to read some ISO 8583 messages, you can still do that, but it's rather different so there is some uh, degree of dependency to the event broker itself. So the how to go about it is basically make sure you use open standards like JMS, API standards, uh, MQTT, or MQP, or REST, WebSockets. So you, you do have some dependency in terms of design, but you are not being locked in, basically. Right. So yeah. With Solace, we, we try to help with these open standards. So we have our own API on the left, the green one, but we also support all these kinds of open standards, plus connectors, plus partners uh, down below, and also uh, connecting to Kafka or IPAS like Boomi. So this this helps you not to be, uh, be, you know, be challenged by, uh, if your new system wants to connect to the broker and then you end up having to learn a new API, like maybe you need to learn Kafka API to be able to send something to your big data pipeline. So let's not do that, right? So you do what you do. If you are using REST with .NET, do that. Then the event will flow through to Solis. We'll do the protocol translation for you, right? So a little bit of when I say it's not just one broker, it's something like this. So this is what we call event mesh. The idea is that events can flow dynamically between one broker to the other uh, without you having to statically define which topic needs to go where. And again, this is not something like 
you have a, a storage and then you replicate the storage byte to byte byte per byte to your your cloud environment it's basically a message per message does this message needs to go to aws if we do have subscriber there and and have the correct subscription or matching subscription then the event will flow there otherwise it won't go there and whenever the application shuts down we stop sending the events there right so this is the uh, event mesh dynamically uh, moving events around happy to uh, talk more about this later on but let's uh, get ahead to, to save some time and how do we do this routing that's basically with the topic right and then topic routing in solace is not just one string where you say this is my topic name it's basically like a hierarchy right? and here there's a four level examples and you can basically filter based on each hierarchy you can do something like this so you can use uh, single level uh, wildcards or multi-level wildcards like the uh, greater than uh, notation there so mqtt also does this as well and we support mqtt as well right so with all of those uh, again people has been uh, hearing about even different architecture many years ago it's, this is not something new right this is this been around for 20 years or so but it's not that popular and the reason is because of all this decoupling makes it a little bit not a little bit actually much more difficult to design your enterprise right so all these questions is usually uh the architects usually end up with a, a spreadsheet or a, a document or a confluence document to note who published what events who subscribed to those events what's the version who changed what why and all that stuff and that's why we also have this event portal uh, this is what i'm going to show you a bit later okay there's another question from rahmat uh, we have web sandbox by the api with any code. okay so this is something that i think async api is, is trying to do i don't think we are at the same maturity level as uh, swagger or open api but the code generation uh, is uh, catching up real fast so yeah i don't think we we have that that uh, convenience as swagger yet right okay so so this is the the third uh, topic of my uh, material today times when async api fits better so I'm going to start with a very simple RESTful services. I'm just going to make it SPC123 for simplicity. And this is what we usually see, right? You have a call that that service calls another uh, endpoint and then another endpoint, which maybe holds some data or maybe doing some logging, maybe doing some audit, writing to a database. Once done, it's come back and then you come back to the uh, customers. So again, this is very simplified, but this uh, should be enough to show the next uh, situation that I want to talk about. So the first case is uh, what I call the, the Aki Aki. So Aki is in, uh, I think for the, for the foreigners, this basically means grandpa. Right? It's just to show some surfaces that are actually slow, but needs to have those events. Again, the, the the flow is a little bit the same, but what we want to change is that now, instead of waiting until the surface tree is done with writing whatever payload he wants to write to the storage, we can immediately go back to the consumer and say your transaction is kind of done. And this is where uh, in the even driven architecture world, there's a term called uh, eventual consistency because what happened is the step number six is going to complete essentially just not now so we can we can go ahead with our other work without having to wait for that and the reason is because this is usually slow this might be talking to your third party partners this might be just calling a store procedure in your early bms something like that it's rather slow but then you want to make sure that it is not lost it needs to be 
there so it, it cannot be lost it the order also cannot be messed up so that's where the uh, the brokers come into picture so we we do this queuing make sure nothing is lost make sure the order is guaranteed okay. so, so some brokers might not be able to guarantee the ordering some other brokers might not be able to guarantee the persistence some can do both right the second situation is the what i call the bully right? so this is the, the foreigners so this is basically this to show that sometimes you need to talk to other system that does not speak your protocols right just for a very simple example jms jms has been around for many years and it's still going to be around for few years more to come and you need to be able to talk to them but your svc1 svc2 does not need to be able to talk as uh, jms right you might be doing something with uh, node.js and you don't want to have anything to do with jms that's totally fine the broker will do it for you so this is about talking to different protocols the other one is about uh, the the capo one so this is a bit of singaporean terms so some some people just need to know everything right? maybe a, a dashboard maybe your pipeline maybe your machine learning or maybe some other cloud applications right so these are the three cases where async api should fit better in terms of uh, designing and executing this rather than having everything done with rest right so if you look at the third situation here if you want to do more than one uh, activity with a, a single event basically the service needs to do multiple calls right that's that's how we do things with rest so yeah i think let's go ahead and show some demo so if you go to solace.com slash cloud you can actually register for free to use the broker the runtime here and the designer the event portal here so i've i've got one already created to save time but you can always uh, click the plus button and choose where you want to run you want to run the free version or the professional uh, version choose where you want to run it maybe google cloud or and this is where we have our google instance running give it a name and then start and then you will have your broker running in no time so i have this one running in and then this is where you do the design so you can have multiple domains i already have this one created uh, actually i created only a few days back and this is to to uh, to show how this SVC one, SVC three actually talks to each other with an event now, not with rest. All right. So I'm also doing uh, this this order created as a sample, and this will have a a topic. Let me make it a little bit bigger, and it will have an a schema attached to it. Right. So this. The schema is basically a JSON schema. You can edit that uh, directly on the event portal itself. Right. So you can see that this event actually published by Surface One, just like our sample. And then it's being subscribed by not just one, it's one, two, three, four services. Can be many others later on. Right. So the the real-time dashboard is an application that uh, just basically just a new exam, uh, example to do a dashboard and here's here is where you can download the the specification and with that specification you basically can generate a code right? so the code would look like the generation would look like something like this okay a bit bigger yeah so this is the command that i use so this is something you can install it's basically uh, 
something you can install with npm i'll share the link later on so you say uh, this is the directory that i want to generate the code and the uh, solace cloud stream binder is solace so i'm generating a spring cloud stream uh, binder now uh, with binder sorry and this is again this usual java stuff and this is the spec that i want to generate which is our real-time dashboard that i show use now and this is the template that i'm going to use the java spring cloud stream template right let's take a look a little bit of what the, the code would look like yeah so it's, it's been generated earlier so the one that i did this the last one is failed but you can take a look at the code so very simple uh spring cloud stream applications uh, this is where i put the broker detail and this is the applications and this is the order schema generated from the uh, schema that we have in the event portal so once we have this uh, this is where you can put your business logic for now i just put a, a log and that's it so when we run this this code see where's my browser yep so i go back to my broker we provide the the ways to connect the details to connect uh, whether you want to use solace messaging or web messaging web sockets mqp mptp or rest and we also provide you a simple applications to connect and publish and subscribe events to that particular broker right so what I'm going to do now, this application has been started. So it's listening to the topic where we can now publish as well. The topic is API. Let's just quickly double check if that's the correct topic. So this is the, the event that I want to listen, API order created version order ID. So I missed one, so let's go back there. Just uh, an idea. So this should be your your payload. I'm gonna take uh, it from here. Yeah. So this is what I'm gonna use. ID one customer ID and else. Let's just copy paste that. Sheet and just copy this one out. And this is my schema. Then I publish it. Right. So now I I get that event. Hopefully you can see this all right. So this code is the your your real time uh, Spring Cloud Stream applications basically. And you can also do this with MQTT. I actually, I actually prepare uh, subscribe also. So, but this one is actually subscribing to anything, not just that order. So if I publish another messages, I get that in the uh, MQTT. So now this is publish subscribe in, in action. 
so that's pretty much the the demo so i i, I hope that gives an idea of where async api can be used and what tooling we have uh, what support we have now and just quickly check at the chat if any questions mm. Let me see. Yeah, there's no questions there. Okay. Yeah, let's go back to this slide. So the event portal, uh, what we have there is the first is actually the domain. Right? The domain can be your line of business, can be a specific domain that you want to do, but inside there you will have multiple applications. So applications can be a publisher, can be a subscriber, can also be something like Kafka connector or can be something like uh, the Apache Beam application that we show, a Spring Cloud Stream, Spring Boot, Node.js, Python, you name it. Um, sorry. And that's going to be the event. So event will have the topic address and the metadata. And then it will have the schema. Right? So this schema is where we can uh, use it to generate the code itself. And uh, this tooling, again, uh, catching up real fast with whatever REST API has, has, has in, in store. I mean, uh, it's, it's two years young now, uh, but it's, it's uh, I think, progressing quite fast. And it's open source pack if you want to use the code generation tool or you want to build your own feel free to do that we have a few of our solace employees doing that as well and um, this is again what we did just now we put a very sim simple uh, json schema as a, a sample event called order of course you can do much more complex than this not, not, not problem this will be generated into a class of schema in the Spring Cloud Stream. And then there's the uh, async API generator command. So this, uh, this command basically gives you a skeleton of a Spring Cloud Stream application. What I need to do just to have the business logic there, but for now we just do this logging, very simple, very simple, no business logic whatsoever. And then you can actually have your code running right so so this event portal is the tooling that we talk about you can also have a catalog showing whatever events that you already have what version it is is it a solace or is it a kafka and you can also see the schema from there so your data scientists can actually see uh what what data is flowing across your enterprise and then you can also discover right? so discover is something where you already have some event brokers you want to find out what the what are all the events what are all the topics that you already have and we can also do it for kafka i think we have some customers trying out and saying yeah we have like 300 topics in there Okay, let, let's just try to do a discovery scan and then it turns out they have 6,000. Right? So stuff like this also happens. So either you start from design to your runtime or the other way around, right? So it's a bit strange because I cannot see the faces. I mean, do, do people get it or <laughs> it's totally doesn't make any sense? Okay, so I'll uh, give more time for questions. And while waiting for that, I'll come back to these uh, three situations again. Um, the, the slow one, 
the foreign one and the the capo one yep oh yeah don't forget grab a free solar swag for an event portal demo by me or by uh, our cool developer advocates <laughs> which you should find a lot in our youtube channel but it's it's, it's not this swag though this one i bought it myself <laughs> So just to add, um, I did also similar talk with uh, API base and API craft meetup earlier this year where we did some uh, game um, game design with event driven, but that one was pretty much deep down into the how you do event different architecture with game we did not do any comparison there's another one where we talk about uh, iot solutions for transportation with event portal as well where i also did some code generation and uh, that one was generating a node.js application with mqtp protocol uh, but this one i i tried to do uh, something a bit different so i skip a lot of the contents uh, yeah, that one also took almost one hour, but yeah, it's a bit different, but please do take a look at the previous sessions to get more understanding. And of, of course, if you saw Phil Scanlon's uh, event, uh, talk like uh, an hour ago, that one should cover a lot of the, the, the theory, the foundations uh, behind this. Okay, so that's, I think that's another question. Which protocol you prefer based on performance? Okay. A little bit bias, but of course the Solus C API is going to be the fastest and the 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 one that's fully complete. And uh, if you are looking at doing something rather uh, more lightweight, doesn't need a lot of enterprise API features. MQTT seems to be gaining a lot of traction, especially with sensor readings and all this stuff. And in the in the middle, there's going to be a few more choice for you. Right? I mean, some people will basically have no choice but doing JMS to 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 integrate with the legacy applications. But yeah, please do take a look at Solus API because the, we also have a, a Java real time API, the C API, and uh, there's also a very specific one called Cut Through. I think those APIs are pretty much. Uh, built or grown from the market data situation, market data use cases where it's very much about ultra low latency, ultra high throughput, and we are doing it with hardware. So the API is uh, much, much more performant than the others. But yeah, I think that's it's going to be case by case, depend on, on uh, situations. Right? Sometimes you, you say you want to have performance, but you don't really need the cut through protocol and you, you are okay with using the Java API anyway. So that you need to take a look at how much do you need and what events, what what API features that you need, like do you need queuing, do you need DLQ, uh, that message letter, replay, so all this stuff. Different protocols will have different support. Yeah. So I think I'm I think that's my time, right? Uh, why else? Anything else to add? I think I'm. I just saw saw a comment about Kepo. I think Kepo is also known in Indonesia. No worries. I know some friends that actually built a startup called Kepo Kepo In. <laughs> I hope that's still around that startup. Yeah. So again, uh, I 
thank you again thank you so much for tuning in for listening to what i have to say um i believe the recording will be available anytime uh, sometimes after this feel free to get in touch to get a demo get a swag and also to talk to me directly ask any questions related to these presentations okay uh, thank you so much and see you next time thank you Pak Made. i hope to see you all soon i'm missing the jakarta food already <laughs> thank you mas Harin. thank you Hamad. Thank you, Mas Hadian.